Matthew 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you feeling burdened? Are you carrying the heavy burdens of guilt and shame? The Savior is giving out this invite, and he says, come, and I will give you rest. Welcome, dear viewer, and welcome to our Great Controversy series. Today we are looking at chapter 14, The Letter Reformers. And with me in studio to look at this chapter, we have Brother Brighton, we have Brother Sambulo, Sister Kumbu, and Brother Tabelo. My name is Modesta Muregumasiwa. And before we go into today's proceedings, we are going to invite God through prayer. I'm going to ask Sister Kumbu to pray for us. Okay, shall we pray? <clears throat> Our kind and our loving Father who is in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, whom mm. we know that you have sent to this place to Ish. help us, Lord, to break down your bread. Mm. Father, we ask for him in a special way to touch our hearts, to mm. touch our minds, to touch our brain cells, our tongues, Lord, mm. so that we may share the gospel in a way that will draw men unto you. Yes, may Lord. you, Father, talk to your children we, our, our aim, Lord, our goal is to spread the gospel of the second coming of Jesus. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 The topic for today is the letter English reformers. So from the beginning chapters, we have been talking of the reformers, the very important men and women who stood up against um, the established religion of that time. I always think of the light as a fire, a fire that burns. But the enemy is trying to take out this fire. He's trying to pour cold water on this fire and take it out. But there are faithful men and women of God who stand out against the enemy and they protest against the enemy. And therefore today we are going to look at some of the later English reformers, those who took over from the likes of John Wycliffe and Martin Luther um, and uh, some of the other reformers. You know, uh, it's actually brilliant on how we never run out of reformers. We have looked at the likes of Martin Luther, John Haas, John Wycliffe, and as we go down with the book, more reformers keep popping up. The more the reformers are suppressed, the more other reformers spring up. We are now looking at the likes of Tyndale, the likes of Charles, the likes of Wesley, the likes of Latima. And uh, the one who actually takes the stage for me would be Tyndale. He actually received the gospel from the Greek testament of Erasmus. He was so convicted by the gospel, he went around preaching the gospel. He, he went around testing the doctrines that they had as a people against the scriptures. And he, uh, against the claims of of. of of the, 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 the Romans that they only could interpret the Bible. He, say, he says to them, who taught the eagles how to find their prey? The mm. same God who taught the eagles how to find their prey will actually interpret the gospel to his children. And so I'm amazed by these reformers and by, of course, the likes of Tyndale. Mm. Speaking of Tyndale, he is described as a diligent student and an earnest seeker for the truth. He had received the gospel from the Greek Testament of Erasmus, as my brother pointed out. And this is a common thread that runs out through all the reformers. They were earnest seekers of the truth. Yes. They wanted to know about God. They were looking for God for themselves. Yes. Mm. Um, you know, it's interesting when you look at uh, Tyndale. Uh, because when you look at his work, his work um, is almost the same as the work of uh, John Wycliffe. Mm. So because um, their, 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 their main mission was to, what, what, was to translate the Bible to the common language of the people. Yes. They, 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 they wanted the Bible to, what, to be exposed, to be accessed by the people. So they made sure uh, that, you know, they, they worked tirelessly to make sure that they translated the whole book uh, till the finish. And when, when you look at him, you know, I like what my brother said, uh, Brother Brighton, uh, when, when he said that it's amazing that you know uh, we never ran like we never ran out of reformers, and you know when I looked at that, uh, like 
It dawned on me um, because it is the same thing that I also noticed, that whenever, you know, uh, this reformer pops up and then he does his work and then uh, when you look at him, you will see that um, at the end of his life and then another one will, will spring out. You know, um, it, 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 it brought to my mind, you know, something uh, that goes something like this because when you look at the enemy, when he fights against these reformers, uh, in his attempts to fight, uh, you know, he, like, he's, he's using a very very a wrong strategy, but uh, he has no other choice because there is no other way to, uh, to actually extinguish the fire. Because when you look at him, you know he's trying to switch off the speakers instead of what instead of the MP3 player. You know, you, you know because. Because you can cut off the speaker from the MP3 player, but the song will keep on playing yes. on the MP3 player. Yeah. So now uh, it's the same thing. The Holy Spirit was the one doing this work, reforming and exposing the works of the devil. But simply because the devil cannot extinguish the Holy Spirit, he will just take out people that the Holy Spirit was using. But lo and behold, as he uh, as was trying to silence this group, yes. uh, the Holy Spirit will work uh, through another group. Yes. yes. So, in fact, this chapter, it, it starts with the translations of, of, of the Word of God into different languages so that people could understand. Mm. So, this, we, we want to look at how um, we are also doing it in these days mm. because it's important that people uh, get the message, the gospel, using their own home language. Exactly. We thank God because the Bible has been translated into almost all languages in the world, mm. just a few. Yes. And we really want to thank God for that. Yes. Mm. Interestingly, the Bible I have with me is in English. Mm. Mm. And the person who translated the Bibles into English was in fact uh, Tyndale. Yes. yes. Now, uh, during these times, during Tyndale's time, there weren't uh, many <coughs> Bibles uh, available. In fact, there were only parchments and those were extremely expensive and only the few wealthy people could uh, to get, get access, get access yeah. to yeah. them. Not to mention they were poorly translated in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. So now Tyndale has started making proper or better translations yes. of the Bible, mm -hmm. and he's printing them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then one of his friends who is distributing these Bibles mm. uh, has a stock of Bibles. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And the Bishop of Durham mm. purchases all these Bibles so that he can burn them. Hey. Hey. And that is that is that is his attempt to to stem to to stop the the, the, the gospel. gospel. Yeah. But we know from Isaiah 54 verse 17 that no weapon formed against thee will prosper. prosper. So what yeah. happens? They use the money that they get from from uh, from the bishop mm -hmm. to actually print an even better translation. Mm -hmm. So he actually finances the he gospel. He finances mm -hmm. the gospel by trying to destroy, by trying to destroy the gospel. Exactly. This is the situation that we see here. Uh, Another thing I wanted to point out is that during this time, you could see the, the pure vileness of the, of the papacy. Mm. There is a, a learned Catholic doctor yeah. who was speaking with, with, with Tyndale. He said that, and I quote, we were better to be without God's laws than the popes. Hey. Mm. And Tyndale replied, I defy the pope and all his laws. And if God spare my life uh, many years, I will cause a boy that driveth the plow to know more of the scripture than you do. Exactly. Mm. And that is why I am, I am glad that we have Bibles in, in many different translations. Mm. Yeah. Now, I won't claim to, to read Bibles that are not in English, <laughs> but there are people who, who, who need these Bibles. And it is a good thing that the work of the gospel has not been stopped. Mm. Yes. We see that um, if there is anything that the enemy hates, yes, it is the word of God. Yeah. Uh -huh. If there was something that he was always trying to, to stop from getting into people's hands, mm. it was the word of God. Mm. But we thank God that he preserved his word. Mm. And today we have it. And we have it in our own mother tongues. Yes. Mm. And because we have it, let's make use of it. Yes. Mm. Because this is the weapon formed against evil, and this is the weapon formed against the devil. And what, and, I, always just yes. uh, what I always say is that um, it, it touches me to think that some people had to lose their lives for me to be having this Bible. Hey. Mm. Mm. It, it tells me of the value. Some, some, someone lost their life for mm. me to be able to have this copy. There was a time when it was only for the elite, those who could afford. 
Mm. But right now, it's at anyone and everyone's disposal. Anyone yes. can afford it. But I, I sometimes see it the way we take it for granted, mm. only to think that someone lost their life. Yes. You, you so, know, actually, yeah. if you look at it, the, the conditions under which the New Testament was translated into English were not pleasant co conditions. Not at all. It was after they had chased Tyndale out of England into Germany, yes. and he was hiding from England that he actually wrote the English Bible. Uh, yes. I think there's something to, 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 to get out of this thing. Mm. The, the, uh, uh, the mission does not stop because the condition has changed. Uh -uh. Yeah. The mission does not stop because now I'm in a bad condition. Mm -mm. This man is 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 actually in holding Mm. This man is a captive, but he's not a captive of the gospel. Mm -hmm. He does not hold the gospel because life has held him back. Mm. Instead, in his captivity, he sees an opportunity to actually spread the word. Yes. Even after he was chased out of England, and this is another thing, he was chased out of England. He mm. translates the Bible into English. Mm. He might have been angry at those who chased him out of England, and he might mm. have said, we are shutting the gospel out of these ones. The yeah. gospel will not reach these people because of how they treated me. Yeah. But he says, actually, the way they treated me actually holds testimony to that they need the gospel yes. more than we do. Mm. As you go down with the chapter, you'll then realize that actually Mrs. Ellen G. White says the gospel needs to start first in the church yeah. before it goes out because it is much more needed within us than yes. outside of the church. Yes, uh, you know, um, to add on that, because when you look at the, the condition or the situation, the, the, the circumstances surrounding, uh, you know, the, the work of Tyndale, mm. uh, you realize that, you know, they wanted to persecute him because he did not run, a bit, because they chased him around, actually, around England, and then he actually um, went out of England and went to Germany. And then from Germany, he was also persecuted. Uh, but uh, at the end, he actually finished the work. And then the, the copies of the Bible were, were being sold. And now, but the part that I liked when I read, you know, chapter 14 was that um, the more they persecuted him, the more, the, like, like the more he spread the word, the, the more he continued with greater zeal than before. You know, so, 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 so as they were trying to silence him, like he will, you know, like he, they were, it's like they were adding fuel to the fire because the more they tried to silence him, the more, uh, you know, he went out uh, with zeal and translated the Bible and made sure that the truth gets out to the people. That is very amazing. Um, Tyndall was a faithful servant of God, mm. and he died a martyr's death. Mm. But that did not stop the gospel. Yes. No. It did not stop the truth. Yes. Mm. We learned that he had friends called Barnes and Frith, Mm -hmm. mm. uh, who defended his work. Yes. Mm. And after him, we also find people like Latima, mm. Mm -hmm. who also carried on mm. with the work of spreading the, the truth. Yes. Just before we go for a break, we can just touch a little bit uh, on Latima. Uh, yes, Latima, actually, from, he maintained from the pulpit that the Bible must be read in the language of the people. Mm -hmm. That was his main message to the people. He fought for the right of the people to receive the gospel in their language, mm -hmm. which exactly. is very, very important because uh, the enemy can easily keep away the gospel from the people through language barrier. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Latima was there to make sure that everyone receives it in their own uh, language. Mm. Yes. Um, Latima says these words. They jumped out at me, and I just have to say them, mm. <laughs> to read them. Mm. Um, he once asked, and he said, who is the most diligent bishop or prelate in all of England? Mm. Yeah. And then people looked at each other. They didn't understand what he was talking about. Mm. And then he said, I should name him. I will tell you, it is the devil. devil. Mm. Straight. Yes, it mm. is the devil. He was the most diligent bishop at that time. He's still the most diligent bishop at this point in time. But yes. now we are going to take a break. And after the break, we are going to continue discussing the later English reformers. Welcome back. Just before the break, we were discussing the reformer called Latima, who also contributed a lot to the spreading of the truth. 
Brother Tabela. I would like to read a quote uh, by Hugh Latimer. He says, let us not take any bywalks, but let God's word direct, direct us. Let us not walk after our forefathers, nor seek not what they did, but what they should have done. Hmm. So what Hugh Latimer is saying here is that the Bible should be read by anyone. And they should read it in their, in their own language, as he has said before. Mm. However, the Bible has objective truths. Mm -hmm. Each person should read and, and discern for themselves and with the help of the Holy Spirit, the meaning of the Bible. Yeah. Mm. But if your, if your interpretation is also against the Bible, mm -hmm. then you know that uh, you are, are moving astray. And mm. we often find that people who, who love to observe the, the traditions of their families mm. or to follow the cultures of their families, the, the mm. cultures that they have followed for many years, yeah. uh, tend to stray away from the bi yeah. from from biblical uh, from biblical instruction yes. Yes. in favor of their culture. Mm -hmm. hey. And Latima says here that they should not do as their forefathers did, mm -mm. but what their forefathers should have done. Sure. Yeah. Hey. That's yeah. amazing because mm -hmm. when we look at the reformers, they were mainly fighting for the uh, freedom of conscience mm -hmm. and the freedom of judgment. Mm. And their argument was everybody can reason for themselves. Mm. Everybody should have an opportunity to choose God for themselves, mm. to choose to, op to, to worship him as he's supposed to, to be worshipped mm -hmm. and not to be told by another individual what to do. Mm. We have another man who was also important mm. uh, in the reform movement and his name is John Knox. You, you know what's actually interesting about John Knox? Unlike the other reformers who stood up for the gospel, with John Knox, the people around him identified the talent in him, or should I rather say the spiritual gift in him to yes. preach. Mm. And when they approached him to do so, he was so terrified and he, he was so afraid, he, he went into isolation for a while. Mm. I thought about it. I want to, to, to assume that he meditated around it with God. Mm. And after he came back, he came back with the gospel. He came back preaching the gospel up to a certain point whereby he is called by the Queen of Scotland. Yes. Mm. The, the Queen of Scotland actually says the gospel of John Knox is heresy. Mm. The Queen of Scotland claims that the gospel that John Knox possesses is the gospel of Harris. Mm. And this is what he says when he replies, I will read it, and I quote, As a right religion took neither original strength nor authority from worldly princes, mm. but from the eternal God alone, so are not subjects bound to frame their religion according to the appetites of their princes. Mm. Mm. For oft it is that princes are the most ignorant mm. of all others in God's true religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If all the seed of Abraham had been of the religion of Pharaoh, whose subjects they long were, mm -hmm. I pray you, madam, what religion would there have been in the world? Mm -hmm. Or if all men in the days of the apostles have been had been of the religion of the Roman emperors, what religion would there have been upon the face of the earth? Mm -hmm. And so, madam, ye may perceive that subjects are not bound to the religion of their princes, albeit they are commanded to give them obedience. And I close the quote. So what he is simply saying is, you cannot enforce the religion of the ruling party. Mm. If the, Roman, the Romans are ruling, it doesn't necessarily mean the whole nation is supposed to be that of the Roman Catholic religion. Mm -hmm. He says if that was the case, when we were still bondages, when we were still in bondage, sorry, rather, in the land of Egypt, and we took the religions of the, of the pharaohs, which religion would have spread in the world? He mm -hmm. says, yes, we are supposed to be obedient to the ruling party, but we are more obedient to the word of God, which I think mm -hmm. there is a lesson to take right here. Mm -hmm. We are obedient to the word of God, not to the one who is up, not to the human authority that is above us. Mm -hmm. We are obedient to the word of God, not to the elder. We are mm -hmm. obedient to the, word of, to the word of God, not to the pastor. Mm -hmm. We are obedient to the word of God, not the conference, not the division.
division. When the division says something that is outside of the word of God, we are called to stand like reformers. Actually, if you look at it, the, the, whole, uh, the, the whole story or the beginning chapters of the book, The Great Controversy, it's mm. reformers who identified that their leaders were leading them astray. Yeah. And when they identified, then they took the word of God and they said, this is our guidance. So John Knox also fights for this thing. He says, yes, we are supposed to be obedient to those who rule us, but we are not going to follow them even when they lead us astray. Mm. That's amazing. Um, God is described as one who rewards those who diligently seek him, mm. which mm. means that searching for God Yes. is a personal thing. Yes. Exactly. It is something that we have to do as mm. human beings on mm. a personal level. Yes. Mm. So we see this with John Knox. He's even described as a man who did not fear the face of any man. Mm. He was fearless. Yes. He was on fire. Mm. And we see this uh, in all the reformers. They had the Holy Spirit in them, mm. the spirit of courage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, you know, when you look at John Knox, uh, how he was called, it's very interesting because uh, we see him actually, you know, being hesitant to actually accept the call because they, 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 they saw in him that, you no, know, this, this man uh, can actually preach. This man can, you know, can lead us uh, in, 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 what, in breaking down the word of God. But mm -hmm. we see him being hesitant. And, but then um, when he finally accepts the call, we yeah. see that down the line, you know, when he, when he stands uh, before the monarchy, he tells them, like he exposes, uh, you know, their errors. And then yes. he's not afraid, you know, to call a spade a spade. And he's not afraid, that, uh, like he's, he's not even intimidated by the position of their authority. Authority. Yes. He just mm -hmm. tells the truth just as it is. Yes. So, and, and then when you read, you see that he is described as a man who was fearless. Yes. So when you look at that, then, then you ask yourself, you know, like it dawned on me as, as, as to why was he hesitant then? Because I thought maybe he was afraid of persecution. Maybe he was afraid that his message, like his message or his preaching is going to be rejected, you know, here and there. Then why was he afraid? The answer is he never, he, he, actually, he actually was what? He was afraid that when he gets to that position, he will what? He will, like he was afraid that he might actually be what? He might actually be taken with this, um, with this thing that most people are taking over uh, right now. When you, when you look at most churches, that, you know, they, they become the center. We mm. uh, you know like they become, you know, the center of attention. You mm. know, they like the, the appraisal of the people and the mm. applause. So what, what he never wanted is the pride that comes or, or the, you know, the, what you call this, the, the arrogancy that comes with actually occupying the position of preaching. Yeah. When people, you know, say, you know what, you are a powerful preacher. And then people yes. will be like, yeah, 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 I am a powerful preacher. I'm a prominent speaker and everything and, and, and stuff like that. So he wanted to deal with himself first so that when he, 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 has, he has actually subdued his will uh, with the, like under the will of God, then he can actually take on the cause and make sure that after he has preached, he will not be cast away. Mm. It's very interesting that, you know, John Knox, John Knox worked, worked in, in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting how God will always pave the way for his work. Yes. Hey. When, when John Knox came, he found already there were already reformers that had started the work in Scotland. Mm -hmm. We have Columba. Yes. Who, who had already started working on Scotland, on, on, on reforming, making sure that in Scotland there is reformation. Mm. And also we have the law lads. Mm. They came from England to Scotland with the Bible and the teachings of Wycliffe. Mm. So these reformers, they were actually predecessors of, of John Knox. So, mm. so when yes. he came, the path had already been paved for John Knox. Mm. And also we find Hamilton and Richard, this one's very interesting. I would like to dwell on this just for a few minutes. H Hamilton and Richard, they were, they were princes by birth, mm. but we find them yielding their lives at the stake. Mm. Mm. So this says to me, the gospel is no respect of persons. Yeah. Mm. Princes by birth, they could have looked at their position and said, you know what, I'm a prince. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not going to stoop that low. Yeah. Mm. But we find them accepting the gospel, the truth, to, th to the level of them accepting the death at the stake. Mm. Imagine a prince mm. being burnt. Being burnt. Mm. Mm. That's how powerful the word of God is. Exactly. It touches any soul. It reaches to the deepest valley and the highest mountain. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we know 
that all things work together for, for good, good. Mm. Yeah. To, them. to them that love God yes. and, and to them who are called according to, to his purpose. Yeah. Romans yes. chapter 8 verse 28. Yes. We know if you read uh, Ministry of Healing, yes. uh, page 487, paragraph 1, it says, study the history of Joseph and Daniel. The Lord did not prevent the plottings of men who sought to do them harm. Mm. Mm. But he caused all these devices to work for good to his servants who amidst trial and conflict preserved their faith and loyalty. So, mm. yes, we see this continually through history where we are oppressed for, for our beliefs. Mm. Mm. But I just want to say that we should not be discouraged. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Joshua 1 verse 9 says, have I, uh, I have commanded thee to, mm. to be, uh, be strong for and courageous. Yes. Mm. Uh, um, so we know, we know that uh, life, life as a Christian will not be easy. Exactly. Mm. Something we know. Yeah. Mm. But we should know that the Lord is always with us. He's always going to guide us through it. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. And also in this chapter, we see the changing face uh, of false religion. Mm. So when it was the time for the Roman Empire, the papacy was so much in control. Mm. But there came a time where the monarchy now came into the picture. Mm. And so it was no longer the papacy as such, which was trying to oppress the people and control mm. the people, but it was now the monarch which was now the head of the church. Yes. And we see this particularly in England. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this is where we are introduced to the men, um, John and John Wesley, rather. Yes. Mm. John yes. Wesley. Mm. Um, can you touch a little bit on that one? Um, one thing that uh, stood out for me with yes. John Wesley was how they, they always um, said him and the reformers are presenting to them a strict gospel. Yeah. They always accused them of presenting this high standard gospel that no one could reach. Uh, but when he replies to such allegations, they say, how strict is the gospel that I'm presenting to you compared to the one that was presented to you by Christ? Yes. The very same gospel that Christ presented to us is the very same gospel that we are presenting to you today. He later goes on to say, the gospel will not come down mm -hmm. to, your, to, to, to your standard, mm -hmm. but you need to rise up and reach the standard of the gospel. Mm -hmm. If you fail to do so, then you can go and perish. Such brave and wise words, by, by, by Wesley. I think it's, it's actually a call for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we do not alter the gospel so that the to gospel suit can suit our lifestyles. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Oh, but we live up to the gospel. Yes. We live mm. up to the standards of the gospel. That was actually the whole, the, the whole reason why they had a fiasco and, and the whole reformers and everything. It's because the leaders so often wanted to alter the gospel so yes. that the gospel could accommodate their lifestyles mm. instead of them changing their lifestyles so that they could be in accordance with the gospel. Yes, mm. I'll just take you a little bit back before we go to the yes. break. Uh, speaking of the monarchy being in charge, mm. uh, it was also oppressing the Christians. Mm -hmm. So mm. we learned that they could not worship the way they wanted mm. to such an extent that they had to worship sometimes uh, in the jungle, yes. Mm. Yes. in the middle of the night. Yes. Mm. They had to worship in valleys and alleys. Yes. Mm. They could not worship freely. Mm -hmm. And so the monarch was also just perpetuating what the papacy was doing. Mm. We are also told that the papacy also left some residue that mm. was taken over by yes. the monarch. Yes. So mm. the papacy did not, did not disappear completely, but there were some relics that showed that uh, the papacy was still kind of in control, Troll. even mm. though the monarch was now in the front. Mm. Yeah. It was the face of the whole operation. It was the face of the whole operation. Mm. Yes. The and same, yes. The same strategy. Yes. Mm. <laughs> religion to control the masses. Mm -hmm. It is the same principle that Napoleon Bonaparte uh, used yeah. after the French Revolution, mm -hmm. when he had uh, taken over France, when he had overthrown the previous government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He allowed religion. He said he was not religion, religious, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but he but allowed religion, religion in order to control the masses. He said mm -hmm. it keeps them from, from uh, rebelling against the king. For now, we are going to take a break. Meet you after the break.
There were so many reformers from all classes, all economic classes. And some of them are not so well known. But God knows them well. Mm. Because God takes not of every contribution that people make. Yes. Mm. Yes. yes. Actually, that would lead us to reformers like uh, John Bunyan, who wrote the famous Pilgrim's Progress. Mm -hmm. This book has led so many people to Jesus Christ, mm. to the foot of the cross. And he also wrote the book, And Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners. Mm. All these books have actually contributed a lot to souls being one to Jesus. Mm. There are also other reformers. They may not really be spoken of that much, mm. but their work was yeah. equally significant. Mm. We have people like Pastor, Flavel, and Alien. They mm. did a lot. They wrote books. Flavel actually wrote Fountain of Life, Method of Grace. And Baxter wrote a book called Reformed Pastor mm -hmm. and also Saints Everlasting Rest. So, viewers, this leads us to, 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 to this point that we don't only need to preach the gospel from the pulpit. Yes. We also need to write it mm. for generations that are coming. Yes. You can imagine if these did not write anything for us to have now to read, yeah. we would, would not have had this privilege of knowing Christ. Mm. So those who can write, let us write. It mm. also talks to the importance of education. As Christians, yes. we believe in education, mm. in true education, mm. so that we're able to write books, we're able to put our service to God. Mm -hmm. And also, I'd like us to also touch on um, what we call uh, antinomianism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have anything to say, Modesta, before I go into that. Um, we just have to note that the enemy is always at work mm -hmm. to try and dilute the truth or to stamp it out co completely. Mm -hmm. So he's always coming up with ways to do that. And so we learn here that the great doctrine of justification by faith, so closely taught by Luther, mm -hmm. had been almost wholly lost sight of. Mm -hmm. And the Romish principle of trusting to good works for salvation had taken its place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, trusting to good works, this was not the only thing that had taken root. Mm -hmm. But there were also other false beliefs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that would be... Um, beliefs like antinomianism, which is, let me, let me quote, it says that this belief, it was say, teaching people that, the, that even one of the vilest of sins considered universally an enormous violation of the divine law is not a sin in the sight of God, mm. if committed by one of the elect. Hey. Because it is one of the essential and distinctive characteristics of the elect that they cannot do anything that is either displeasing to God mm. or prohibited by the law. Mm. Oh, wow. You know, um, when, when you look at uh, Charles Wellesley, uh, how, 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 how we got converted because uh, when you look at, you know, the subject of justification by faith, faith yeah, yes, yeah. He, he like, he's the one who actually perpetuated the message or who actually spread the, uh, like, who worked so hard to spread the message of justification by faith. But when you look at him, because at that time, uh, the, pre the, the, you know, the, the, the teachings that were common at the time were the teachings uh, of, 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 the, of the Roman Catholic Church, mm. uh, where they were taught that actually a person is justified by his or her good works. works. You yes. know, when you have seen, when you want to be justified before God and be accepted, there, there, there's some certain things that you need to do, certain rights that you need to perform. So, you know, when he was, you know, boarding on a ship, uh, like, he, he, like he was boarding on a ship with these people called the Moral. Mm -hmm. uh, from Germany. So, um, and, and as they were boarding, they, they were met with a tempest storm. And then, we you know, they, 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 like they were actually in peril. Most of the people were panicking in the ship, but these people, the Moravians, were, were, were so calm. They were, oh, they, yeah. they were so calm. They were, they were praying. They were singing hymns. They were comforted. And then he was, he, 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 he was stunned because when he looked at them, he did not understand why these people would be like this in times of perils. Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, when they, when they actually get to the to the show he actually uh, you know spoke to them and then he and then he asked them as to why were they uh, so contained like this yeah. what's their secret and everything and then they taught him uh, that you know they are not afraid of dying because they be 
believe that they are saved uh, by, by the grace of Jesus Christ. So, you know, that's when, you know, he spent more time with them and then they taught him more uh, on the grace of Christ. And then when, when he came back, then he spread the message, the, the message of justification by faith, teaching them that, you know, we, we do not need to perform certain rites and, and, and good works to, for us to be saved. But by simply believing in Jesus Christ, we are justified. Mm. Yes. And, 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 and it is not of ourselves, mm. but it is by the grace of God. the Lord. Mm. Wesley actually writes mm. uh, about this particular event. Mm. Mm. And he says, I felt my heart strangely warmed. Mm. Mm. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, mm. even mine, mm. saved me from the law of sin mm. and death. Mm. When I introduced, I introduced uh, this session with the invitation mm. that Jesus gives. Yes. And he says, come unto to me, me. Mm. all you who labor and are heavy laden. Mm. And the Wesley brothers were laboring. Mm. Mm. They thought that they should labor to be saved, mm. yeah. to have their sins forgiven. Mm. And still to this day, there are some people who think, ah, maybe there's something that I should do for me to be forgiven. Even, yes. I can't simply be forgiven. Mm. Mm. But when he met the Lutherans on the ship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he learned that salvation is freely given. Mm. Mm. The forgiveness of sin mm. is freely given mm. because a supreme sacrifice mm. was paid at the cross. Yes. yes. God paid for our sins mm. and now salvation is promised. free. Yes, yes. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Can I read this? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. Mm. And that not of yourselves, mm. it is the gift of God, God. not of works lest and many should boast. Mm. Mm. This reminds me of this whole story. Yeah. This whole story, this account rather, of, of, of Charles Wesley mm. and his trip uh, to America yes. by boat. It reminds me of the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 37 to 40. Mm. I'll read verse 40 only. Uh, it's Jesus speaking. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no, no faith? faith. Mm. This is after they faced the exact same situation. Mm. In the exact same situation. They were with Jesus in the boat. And the winds and the waves uh, were, 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 were beating. Were very, yes, they were beating. They were, they were, they were well, it was, it was an unpleasant situation. situation yeah. Mm. Yeah. But they let fear get to them. Mm. And they had no faith yes. that the one that they were with can command the waves, the mm. wind and the waves, to, to be still. Yes. So this is the, the attitude that the Moravians had. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. knew that it is not a matter of, of what you do, mm. but it is a matter of faith. Yes. And I like that you read uh, from Ephesians, that we're not saved by our works, but mm. we're saved rather by, by grace, grace. Yes. through faith. Mm. Yes, I just want to, to, to throw in a question there before you go yes. in Brighton. To say, so if we are saved by grace, now, there are some Christians who claim that if we are saved by grace, then we are, we are, we are, we are, we are free. We yeah, are good to go. There is no need for us to pay attention to the law. Yes. Mm. Yes. And they point that out uh, uh, in a very clear uh, 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 ways. And I'm going to quote here from, from the great controversy. It says, in the highest rank of the enemies of the gospel of Christ, mm -hmm. said Wesley, are they who openly and explicitly judge the law itself and mm. speak evil of the law? Mm. Would teach men to break it, not only one, whether of the least or of the greatest, but mm. all the commandments, it is strong. So those who say, now there is no need for the law, there is mm. no need for obedience. In what fact, the teaching that? at that time was saying mm. that um, um, the law, the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, was actually crucified on the cross together with the ceremonial yes. law. Mm. Yes. Mm. Then Apostle Paul asks a question. Shall we then continue sinning because grace abounds? Mm. And he replies the question and he says, God forbid. Yes. But then it comes back and confuses us a bit mm -hmm. because faith 
he also says this, the very same apostle, he says, faith without works is, is dead. 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 So now presented to us is this gospel whereby we are saved by grace through faith, but faith without works is dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I think someone uh, uh, who, who, uh, who understood the process was actually Wesley. Because mm. for, a, for, for a long time, a number of years, he dedicated his life to follow God through works. Yes. Mm. He did things and, and performed tasks like one may say the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the time of yes. Jesus. Mm. And when he actually realized and actually found this gospel, he was amazed. Mm. You know why he was amazed? Mm -hmm. Because he realized that the gospel, that, that salvation is free. Exactly. He realized that salvation is through grace. Mm. But what's actually interesting is that even after he had found the grace part, mm. he did not let go of the works part. Yes. You see, this is how it works. Yes. The, the, the Pharisees of those days believed that uh, you, the foundation of the gospel is works, mm. and then the result is grace. But mm. it's actually the other way around. Exactly. The foundation is grace, then the results are works. Yes. If you receive grace, you cannot continue sinning yes. because you have received grace. But mm. you do not be obedient. You are not obedient because you are trying to accumulate grace. grace. No. And hence, mm. grace is the foundation, and then works are the results. Then George, uh, George, uh, uh, Wesley says, when grace was the foundation, then I continued steadfastly following the law of God, mm. not because I was trying to buy salvation, yes. but because I had received grace, mm. and the results of grace were obedience mm. to the law of God. Mm. Mm. Amen. The biggest enemy of the law of God mm. is the devil himself. Yes. Exactly. And so he moves on his agents yes. to actually water it down and bring it to naught. Mm. Jesus himself said, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Yes. Mm. And so the law still stands. The law is perfect. Yes. Mm. 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 The law is of God. I'm going to give my panelists a chance to say closing remarks before we finish off. Um... Uh, considering that we are coming to the to 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 the close of of uh, the chapters that actually talk about reformers, mm. I think it would rather be unfair or slash unjust not to quote this uh, a quotation from one of the other books of Ellen G. White. The book is Education. She says the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Mm. Men who will not be bought or sold. So, yes. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Yes. Men who do not fear to call sin by its rightful name. Mm. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole. Mm. Men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Mm. And mm. such men were the reformers. Amen. Exactly. Uh, you know, um, what I can say about the, the reformers uh, of which, you know, due to time we did not actually uh, dwell um, in, in, into detail on it is that you know when whenever you know they took their stand uh, on the truth when they preached the truth when they uh, did the works of, of, of actually spreading the gospel should it be writing should it be preaching mm -hmm. uh, or any other form uh, they were they were also met with persecution and you know um, when you read the chapter I I, re I really encourage you to actually go and read the chapter for yourself in yeah. in, in the book Great Controversy yes. you will see that uh, you know there there are some accounts there uh, of, of, of them actually telling um, uh, us about their stories of persecution mm -hmm. uh, just like the story of of, 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 of Charles Wesley yeah. uh, when when he says as he was preaching this gospel because this gospel actually challenged um, you know the Catholic Church because mm -hmm. they were teaching that actually there are some certain rights that you need to perform in order for you to be saved yeah, and, uh, he was teaching um, a different one He's, he was saying actually it's, it is grace you are saved by grace alone you don't do anything to, to try and make up for your sins so now, as he was doing that, you see, you see that he was persecuted, and through his persecution, mm -hmm. he actually never experienced pain. People were, were were trying to get hold of him to actually destroy him, but in the process, he was not afraid, and the, the angels of the Lord were there to protect him. Mm -hmm. Yes, speaking of the interposition of the angels mm. of God, that is very important. We should know that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you choose the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior, mm -hmm. you are safe. They mm -hmm. are angels that guard you day mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. From the experiences of John Wesley, we learn that there are angels that are always guarding us, 
looking after us mm -hmm. day and night. And therefore, if we choose Jesus as the Lord and personal savior of our lives, we will never ever be left alone. It has been a joy and a pleasure to be with you. And to close off our session for today, I'm going to ask my brother Sambulo to pray for us. Let us pray. Our oh, merciful and gracious Father who is in heaven, we thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. Thank you so much uh, for being with us and for guiding us as we do a, a review of this chapter, the chapter 14 uh, of the book, The Great Controversy. And we pray that may the Holy Spirit continue to impress in the minds and in the hearts of those who are listening. Uh, and may you um, may, may the Holy Spirit continue to impress those words and may we not just learn what is truth but may we also practice it in our lives and live by your word and may you, may you continue to uh, enlighten us and show us your, your, your truth and help us to live by it uh, because the times are evil we must do what is right because it is right and live the consequences with the Lord as did the reformers we thank you so much and we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and so Coming, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.